While coding, you would be coming across various mathematics concepts that you must have learned earlier in your uh, class uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th that we, were, we would be using in order to solve that particular problem. So today, uh, in this particular topic, basic mathematics, we would be uh, revising you that those particular mathematics topics that you must keep in mind in order to uh, continue with your coding journey. Uh, you would be facing these uh, concepts very frequently and I would request you to go through all of them in order to progress with your coding journey. Okay. So the first uh, concept is that uh, it, how do we find out the number of digits that are present in a particular number. So the first concept is that find the count of digits in a number. In order to find out uh, the number of digits in a number, so for example, let's take in consideration 123. So if our input is suppose 123, we would have to give an output of 3. Suppose it is 1, 2, 3, 4, we must get an output of 4. So what are the particular ways in which we can count the number of digits that are present in a particular number? There are two ways that one of them is a recursive method and another one is the uh, iterative method. Okay. And in the last one, we would be also solving a, log a logarithmic way which takes a constant time and returns you the number of digits that are present in a particular number. So uh, the iterative way, let's start with the iterative solution. So uh, what we would be doing in this particular uh, example or the iterative example is that we would be taking 123, we would be breaking it down to 12, we would be breaking it to 1, to 0. So let's write a function as int count digit and let's take in an input of int n. Okay, so n is our number that we have been provided as the parameter of our function and we need to find out the number of digits inside this particular number n. So let's keep the count as 0, int count is equal to 0, while n is not equal to 0, we have to iterate through the loop and we would be increasing since the n is not equal to 0, we would be increasing the count by 1 and we would be changing our number as n is equal to n by 10. So we are performing integral division here. So for example, we have a number 123. In the first iteration it enters, it increases the count by 1 and it changes to 12. Okay, since it is divided by 10, 123 divided by 10 would be giving me 12, right? And on further, on the second iteration, it would be 1. So the count would be increased by 1 again. So the count would be becoming 2 here. And we would be, uh, so, so in the first iteration it enters here, in the second iteration it enters here. So, for, so now our uh, n value is 1, which is not equal to 0. So we again enter the loop. Uh, and we increase our count by 1, that is 3. And uh, now our n value, that is 1 divided by 10, is equal to 0. So our n is now 0. And now we can see that our condition is not satisfied. So it exists a loop and we can return count. Which is now, which now has a value of 3. So this is how, uh, this is the iterative approach in order to find out the number of digits that are present in a particular number. Okay, so this is the iterative approach. Now for the recursive approach. So what is recursion? In recursion, we call that particular function from the function body itself and we also provide the base condition where 
uh, the function is not caught. Otherwise, it would lead to a stack overflow, which means that your particular stack is overflowed with the number of calls that you have made to a particular function and it causes a out of memory error. So in order to prevent an out of memory error, you must always provide a base case to your recursion uh, problem, okay? Uh, to your recursion solution, recursive solution. So in order to find out the recursive solution for the count of the number of digits in a number, the code would be again int count digits, let our function be int count digits and it takes in a value of int n and we would be returning 1 plus count digits and instead of n we would be passing n by 10 okay and here there would be a base condition that if n is equal to equal to 0 we must always return 0 and the function closes here okay so what is exactly happening in this particular uh, recursion? So first, our count digits is called count digits is called with n. In the next iteration, it is calling n by 10. Uh, so for example, let's uh, take a better instead of n, let's just take in 123. So let's uh, draw a stack here. So here it would be a uh, count digits 123. I've called this particular function. So this in turn would be calling 1 plus count digits 123 by 10, that is 12. This in turn would be calling 1 plus count digits 1. This in turn would be calling 1 plus count underscore digits 0. So if you are calling count underscore digits of 0, we would be returning 0 here. Since 0 is returned here, this would return 1 plus 0, that is 1 here. This would return 1 plus 1, that is 2 here. And this would return 1 plus 2, that is 3 here. Okay, so as you can see, when you have called your function, at the end, you would be getting a value of 3, which is equal to the number of digits that are present inside your particular number. So this is how the recursive method or the recursive approach of your particular program spans out. Okay. Now for the last approach. So these are the two methods and as you can see, both of them take an order of n in order to, uh, that is uh, the, uh, the time complexity is an order of n or a function of n. So this is also, this also has an order of n and this also has an order of n, right? So, is there any better way in, uh, in which we can find out the number of digits in a number? Let's see whether we can find out any other way or not. So, let me just clean the board and we will be continuing. Yeah. So, uh, you guys have heard of log to the base 10, right? And log to the base 10, uh, if it is log to the base 10 of 10 gives me 1. Log to the base 10 of 100, which is equal to log to the base 10 of 10 square, gives me 2. So as you can see, when we are increasing the particular uh, number of digits, it is giving me a lesser value of the uh, number of digits in a particular number. For 100, it is giving me 2. For 10, it is giving me 1. Similarly, for log to the base 10 of 1000, it would give me 3, right? 
So for any number that lies between 100 and 1000, for example, log to the base 10 of 543 would be giving me a value between 2 and 3, right? So as you can see that it would be a decimal value. So if we add 1 to it and we perform a float operation of it, so we would be getting 3, that is the number of digits of a partic of that particular number that we have provided as the parameter of the log to the base 10 operation. So this is how you can find out the number of digits. So uh, if you are taking suppose a 2 digit number, suppose 45, 45 lies between 10 and 100. So 45 will be giving me a value between 1 and 2. So it would be suppose 1.5. Uh, let's take case and uh, 1.5 plus 1 would be giving me 2.5 and if we are performing floor of it we would be getting 2 which is equal to the number of digits of that particular number that is 45 so what is basically ceiling as and the floor value the ceiling value is that if you have uh, before floor I must explain this concept in what is ceiling and what is seal value and what is a floor value so what is the seal value if I am suppose given a de decimal value that is 3.65 the seal value of 3.65 would be giving me 4 and the floor value of 3.65 would be giving me 3 so here we require the floor value because we are exceeding that particular value and uh, we need to uh, we need to uh, get the lower inte integer value, right? So C and 4 are basically the integer value of that particular decimal depending upon the condition, right? So if you are giving the C value, you would be getting the next integer and if you are giving the floor value, you would be getting the previous integer, okay? So what would the function be looking like for finding out the number of digits in a number? It would be int count digits if I am passing a value n here int n we could be just returning this return floor of log to the base 10 of n plus 1 and that's it so as you had seen in the previous uh, examples we had got uh, uh, there would be one plus bracket here yeah uh, so as you have seen this is our logarithmic solution logarithmic solution so as you can see that in a previous two approaches that as, as well as the iterative approach as well as the recursive approach we were taking an order of n uh, in order to find out that uh, the number of digits in a particular number in this method you could do it in a constant time so obviously you would be preferring this over any other method of finding out the number of digits that are present inside a particular number this, this was the first concept that you need to know uh, in order to uh, progress with your uh, coding, okay? So this is the first mathematics concept. The uh, second mathematics concept that you need to know in order to continue is Yeah, so all cleaned up and uh, so the second concept that you need to know in order to progress with your basic mathematics is the arithmetic and the geometric progressions. So, so second concept is arithmetic progressions and geometric progressions. So you would have heard of 
AP and GP. What was AP and GP? Let me write a series for you. So 2, 3, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, dot, dot, dot. So this is a series. This is the first term which is given by A. And as you can see, these all are separated by a common difference that is 2. So D would be 2. So these particular values can be also written in the format that A A A plus D A plus 2D A plus 3D dot dot dot. So it would be 2 2 plus 2 4 2 plus 4 6 2 plus 6 8 dot dot dot. So as you can see that this is uh, the series of numbers can be represented using the uh, this particular uh, sequence of numbers. So for any sequence of numbers that are present in A, A plus D, A plus 2D, uh, similarly in a similar manner that is it is in arithmetic progression. And you must always know that the sum of a particular AP is given by the formula. So if you are given a series as 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, you can just, this would be really handful in case you see a number, you see an array of inputs and you see that this is in a series instead of iterating through all of your numbers and calculating the sum you can just use this particular formula that the sum of these particular this series is given by 2a plus n minus 1d whole into n by 2 so you, if you are providing this particular formula instead of iterating through all of the inputs that you are getting and adding them you can just get the uh, summation of the values of uh, this particular problem. So, so you would be solving it in a constant time. So the sum of this particular series in arithmetic progression is given by n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. So this is in case of arithmetic progression. So what does geometric progression do? In case of geometric progression, suppose we are given a sequence of numbers that is given as 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Uh, it would be 32. So this would be my first element of my series. As you can see that 2 into 2 gives me 4. Into 2 gives me 4. 4 into 2 gives me 8. So as you can see, the ratio of multiplication, uh, the, the next element is always multiplied by 2. So we can take R as 2. So this is an example of geometric progression. So if you see an input of elements that is present in this particular order, and you have been told that you have to find out the sum of this particular series, you can just return that sum is equal to a into 1 minus r to the power n, n being the number of elements in that particular series divided by 1 minus r. So this is it for the geometric progressions and you must know that what are basically the arithmetic progressions. Obviously you would have done it in class 9 and class 10. This is just a division of your mathematics concepts and you need to know these particular concepts because these come really handy when you are solving particular problems and you are getting a time limit exceeding error and you can solve this particular thing in a constant time in order to get rid of that. So thanks for watching this video guys. We will be coming up with various other basic mathematics topics. See you in the next one.